Jeff Shafflin Dell. And I wish to thank you for tuning in to our program uh, today. What we're going to talk about is the road to sobriety. And before uh, I start that program, I just want to tell you a short story about a little Catholic boy about four years old and a little Protestant girl about four years old that are uh, in a pool and they got all wet so they decided they might as well take their clothes off and the little boy looked at the little girl and said wow I didn't think Catholics and Protestants were that different. What I want to do today is I want to start my story with uh, yogiisms. Now, Yogi was a baseball player, actually a catcher for the New York Yankees, and his quotes are priceless like a nickel isn't worth a dime anymore or never answer an anonymous letter. How about I usually take two hour nap between one and four? That's one of my favorite. And of course, the one we're going to talk about today is when you come to a fork in the road, take it. I'm going to repeat that again so you'll know. When you come to a fork in the road, take it. Let's talk about the fork in the road and deciding on what road you wish to be on for the rest of your life. Are you going to take the road of an alcoholic or drug abuser, or are you going to take the road of sobriety? For those of you, most of you have been on the road to destruction with your continued use of alcohol or mind-altering drugs. Some of you have come on the road to rehab voluntarily while others have been court-mandated. Both roads lead you here. Now, let's take a look at your roadmap of the future. Let's plug in your GPS or your Google map on the iPhone and the story begins. You're on a road and you're going nowhere. You don't know where you're going and no idea of when you're going to get there. The wind from the open window when your car brushes across your ear and drowns out the sounds of your stereo which has been cranked up to scream. But here you are driving down the road just for the sake of driving. You don't know how long you've been driving but you hear the thump, thump, thump of the tires on the concrete road as your car eats up the miles. You haven't eaten for a while, but you have a couple of cans of warm beer on the front seat and some chips that are half stale. You never mind, you're rolling and that's all that counts. Signpost after signpost appear on the horizon, but you pay no mind to them as the exits go and come, go and come, one after another. The sky is gray and there is a smattering of rain hitting your windshield. You turn on the wipers, there's not enough rain on the windshield so the dust and crap that is accumulated on the windshield just turns into streaking. Your windshield wiper squirt, it doesn't work so there's no use turning it on. But you'll look through the smear until you get to the rest area which is probably down the road somewhere and wipe the window with a paper towel from the service area. You have to keep on rolling because your life back in town you came from was not a good place anymore. You've had some alcoholic and drug problems and you thought if you hightailed it to another town or out of state or somewhere else, you could take care of the problems and move on with your life. Your mom and dad probably woke up this morning and discovered that the car was gone out of the driveway and wondering where you are. They have no idea why you left for good. They'll worry about you and when you don't return that evening and uh, you'll get a chance to call them and let them know you're all right, but not right now. At least they deserve that much. Most times the calls they receive uh, from you were calls for help. You needed money. You were sick in a hospital. You needed bail money to get out of a slammer because of your DUI arrest. You haven't made it easy for them. They're loving parents who have been ablers for years, but you can see on their faces the disgust every time they help you out of a dilemma. Oh well, that's over now because you're out of the house for good and probably for the best. You borrowed some money from the folks last night. Well, actually, you stole some money from your father's wallet and you took one of his credit cards before you left. But you promise yourself you'll pay him back when you come clean, when you get a job, 
in any town, anywhere, as long as it's away from your neighborhood and your connections. By now, you've been driving for hours and getting a little tired, so you decide to pull off the road and catch some Z's. Uh, there's a spot you can pull into just up the road. It's a truck stop, and I could sleep in the car for a few hours of rest, get something to eat, wash up, and get on the road again in the morning to a destination somewhere, anywhere. You stretch as you get out of the car, have a few beers, use the men's room, gas up the car, and get back in the car for a good night's rest. It's going to be okay, you say to yourself. Once you find a new town, a new job, a new apartment, a new friend, you're going to be all right. So you think. The next morning starts out all over again. Starting the car, wiping your eyes, straightening your shirt, have two warm beers, pop a blue, and go off down the road to you don't know where. Just moving. Must remember to stay under the speed limit as you don't want to get another cop giving you a DUI ticket and get arrested for that. You've been there. Done that. Mile after mile piles up on the odometer. Hundreds of miles of going nowhere. But you're moving. And that's all that counts. Moving to where you're having the foggiest. But you're moving. It seems that the traffic on the highway just moves along as if you were all wired together and traveling at the same speed. You stay to the right. You stay there with all the semis, but it's kind of like the semis are sheltering you from something. You can smell the diesel fumes coming from those babies as they hustle along to somewhere you're not going yourself. Then up ahead, you see a large lit sign that said, Roadway Narrows. And that highway will end in three miles. Stay to your left. Big flashing yellow lights come into sight. How come I picked this highway that ends in three miles? I'll never know. We all start to slow down little by little until we reach the end of the highway and came to a major fork in the road at the traffic light. You try to look ahead, but the semis are so large you have no vision of what is ahead of them. Little by little, because of the traffic, you move forward to the fork in the road. You finally get to the fork at the traffic light, and there are two signs. Two signs. One sign points left with a big yellow area that says, High Road. And there, on the right-hand side, with a little black arrow facing right, says, Sobriety. The high road to the left, I can see, is well lit. Well-trafficked highway with three lanes, beautiful trees, grass, service areas. And I notice a sign that says, going this way leads to the town of nowhere. Speed limit unlimited. You can hit whatever speed you want. Most of all, the traffic is turning to the left and getting on the highway. Very few vehicles or cars are coming to the right because the pavement on that road well, there is no pavement on that road. And there is no pavement on the road to sobriety. It's a one-lane dirt road with a big yellow sign that says construction ahead. What kind of construction? But I felt that my car was pulling to the right. So by myself, I turned the car to the right and started up the road to a place called sobriety. I had to drive around some barricades that were almost placed in the center of this dirt road just to get moving up the hill. There's no landscaping on this road and it looked as though the construction was going on for some time. Litter strewn the one-way dirt road, but I felt that maybe, just maybe, this experience was worth the trouble of traveling that road. No other car was following me on this path and I kind of felt alone. The road was filled with ruts and stones, and I really had to hold on to the steering wheel in order not to drive off the road. The road was steep, and the further I traveled, the steeper it got. We were climbing up a mountain, very slowly, cautiously, 
and I had to hold on tight to that steering wheel with both hands because of the ruts in the road. It started to rain, not heavy at first, just a little sprinkle on the windshield, but then the sky opened up. It was a cloud burst, lightning and thunder. It got dark. The dirt road became a sea of mud and my car was sliding all over the place. I had all I could do to keep moving up that muddy path. Tires spinning and the stones and muck kept sliding down off the mountain into my pathway. Hard to see the road. I could look to my left over the side of the mountain through the spots on the driver's side window and see the beautiful highway below where all the traffic was bugging with breakneck speed. The sun was shining down there and everything was green. And here I am, all alone, with my car and my thoughts and looking at the busy highway below. Wondering why in God's creation I had made the choice to get on this path, this road to the town of sobriety. God only knows and he wasn't speaking to me or maybe I just wasn't listening. I drove on this road for what seemed hours and noticed that my gas gauge always remained on full. I don't remember the last time I stopped and filled the tank. I then came across a rickety old wooden bridge that crossed a large chasm with a raging river below. The bridge had no side rails and there was only one large wooden plank on either side of the bridge so that my car's tire could just about fit on them. I pulled up to that bridge and stopped contemplating my next move. I could turn around if I wanted to go back down the mountain, but that would have been difficult because the road I was on was so narrow. I had the high rock ledge to the right of the road and to the left was a steep decline. I had a choice. Should I attempt to cross that bridge or should I turn around? All of a sudden, out of the corner of my eye, I spotted an old man with a large white beard and a walking stick watching me from the side of the road. He was just sitting there on a stump of an old tree with what looked like a large brown junkyard dog as company. Son, I heard him say, are you on the way to the town of sobriety? Well, that's my intention, I replied. Well, going over that bridge is the only way to get there and it ain't gonna be easy. You see, you have to stay on the straight and narrow and ride those heavy planks on the bridge or else you're gonna fall into the bottom of the abyss. I then asked the old man, when was the last time you saw someone crossing the bridge? Well, he said, let me think. You know, we don't get too many visitors coming this way because the way is difficult. Most of the folks around here choose the new highway to the town of nowhere. But I can give you a suggestion if you don't mind. If you're really interested in getting to the town of sobriety, Set your sights on the end results of your travel, not on the old and rotten timbers that hold the bridge together. That way, you'll have a direction towards sobriety you're looking for. Go ahead, look straight ahead and be cautious, not to veer to the left or to the right, just go straight. You'll be okay. Have faith in your ability to steer the right course. Sure, I said to myself, that's easy for him to say, but this is my life, and it's me going over that bridge, not the old man. Well, gripping the wheel of the car, I started over this rickety old bridge. Slowly, very slowly, I crossed the bridge, and I could hear the timbers creaking and moaning, and it gave me a very uneasy feeling. It seemed like an eternity, but finally, after holding my breath for what seemed a lifetime, my car bumped over the old timbers at the end of the bridge and I got out of the car. I was a bit shaken to say the least, but there was no turning back now. 
I turned around towards the bridge and yelled to the old man sitting on the stump on the other side of the bridge. Hey, old man, thanks for the advice. I made it thanks to you. I heard the old man reply, I knew you could make it. I saw the strength and determination in your eyes, and besides, I myself crossed that bridge the same way almost 30 years ago. You are certainly on the road to sobriety now. I glanced at the road ahead and I looked back a second time before getting back in the car and the old man was gone. It was just an old stump alongside the rutted and dusty road at the corner end of the bridge. It was getting near noon, so I decided to drive a little bit more and find a clearing where at least I could park the car and have something to eat that I brought with me. About halfway up the mountain, there was a small cutoff. I pulled up and I nudged my car closer to the end of the mountain. And there below, I spotted the speeding traffic on a road to nowhere and the cars and trucks is driving down the highway. I had some snacks that I found under the seat and drank from the warm bottle of water I had lying on the front seat. I must have dozed off because by this time my energy was gone because when I woke up it was nighttime and the fireflies with their luminous little bodies were glowing all over the place. The only other light was the lights from the traffic below from the cars on the road to nowhere. I slept in the car and woke to a new day, refreshed. I backed the car up and headed up the mountain on the rutted, dusty, and rock-filled roadway. The road seemed steeper and steeper, and there was still that sheer drop to the left of the road. It was a little road to make a mistake, so I drove extra careful as I had one to slip. I finally reached the top of the mountain, and there in the distance, was the outline of the town, rooftops and smoking chimneys, beautiful colored trees and flowers alongside a lazy river that glistened in the sunlight. I was joyous and started to feel a sense of belonging and purpose. It was a great sensation. Now, the road to sobriety was now going downhill and with its twists and turns and moving very slowly with my foot mostly on the brake as I didn't want to slip. Just before I came down from the mountain, I noticed a crowd of people at the end of the dirt road. That wasn't unusual, very unusual, I thought for myself. Why was there a large assemblage of people? As I edged closer and closer, in the middle of the road of the people stood the old man that was sitting on the stump at the bridge on the mountain, giving me insight on how I should get to the town of sobriety. As I pulled my car up to the stop and get out of the car, there were cheers and applauds and hugs of plenty and a hearty and lovely welcome to the town of sobriety. You see, I guess the townspeople don't see too many individuals coming down that dirt road off the mountain. The old man walked up to me, stretched out his arms, and we embraced. I heard his familiar voice say, Welcome to sobriety. You've earned a place here. I was overjoyed with the prospect of my arriving at sobriety this day, and I cried tears of joy, real tears that soaked my shirt and clouded my eyes. Congratulations, I had arrived. And that, folks, is the story of how I got the sobriety. I still live in sobriety among the beauties, the blessings and joys of my life. My parents know that I'm here and love me and trust me, which they never did before. I speak with them often. I asked the old man that when his time came, if I could have the honor of sitting on the stump by the bridge and offer directions and encouragement to another person coming along the way on that dirty road looking for sobriety. His answer was yes, we've been waiting for you, and yes, you have earned it, my son. As an epilogue, so here I sit today on that old stump, on the log, with a junkyard dog at my side helping others, and providing my advice on how to get on the road to sobriety. It's a wonderful calling, and I thank my Creator 
for the opportunity to do his work. Now, if you're looking for sobriety, look for me. I'll be sitting on the old stump to the right of the bridge on that old dusty road waiting for you and your car to come rolling along. I'll be seeing you. That's a great story about sobriety. As I close this storybook edition of The Gateway to Spirituality and Sobriety, I want to close with a four-word prayer. Very simple. First two words. I'm sorry. He knows what you're sorry for. You know what you're sorry for. You don't have to say any more than that. The second two words. Thank you. You know what you're thankful for. He knows what you're thankful for. That's all you have to say. So when you lie your head down on your pillow at night, just say those four words. Thank you, and I'm sorry. I like to close by holding my hands up, as the Creator did many years ago. Because if you have one hand in sobriety and another hand in spirituality, you don't have another hand to pick up a drug or a drink. Well, this is Chaplain Dell signing off. Talk to you tomorrow.